This tutorial looks at atom economy. Atom economy is a, a measure of how sustainable a process is. In other words, how much of the reactants end up as product and how much is wasted. To calculate the atom economy, you need to memorize this formula that the atom economy is the relative formula mass of the desired product, the stuff you're trying to make, divided by the sum of the relative formula masses of all of the products expressed as a percentage. You need to be able to calculate that atom economy if you're given a balanced symbol equation. So that means you might need to work out the relative formula masses of various products. And um, you will have to explain why industrial processes want as high an atom economy as possible. So there's that equation again. Atom economy is the relative formula mass of the desired products divided by the sum of the relative formula mass of all the products expressed as a percentage. So here's a question. In the blast furnace, iron is made using this equation. Could you, using a periodic table of data, uh, be able to work out what was the percentage atom economy of this process to make iron? Uh, answer will be on the next slide. So you might want to pause and have a go at the question. So to calculate this, we need to refer back to the equation. Atom economy is the MR of the desired products over the sum of the MR of all the products uh, expressed as a percentage. So we work out the MR of the desired product, which is the two FEs here, and that's uh, two lots of the relative atomic mass of FE, which is 56. Two lots of 56 is 112. And then we work out the MR of all the products here, which is the two 56s, added up to the three carbon dioxides, and the three carbon dioxides will have three lots of carbon, three twelves, and six lots of oxygen, six sixteens, 244. So the atom economy is 112 over 244, expressed as a percentage which comes out at 45.9%, which shows that uh, more than half of the reactants are wasted because uh, more than half the products are not the stuff we want, only 45.9% of the products are actually the uh, desired product of iron. So the importance of percentage atom economy being high is that uh, we want to have green processes or sustainable processes and industry wants to make chemical products but doesn't really want to make additional products uh, and therefore doesn't want to waste reactants in making these. Um, it doesn't want to buy in huge masses of reactants to make small masses of products so industry wants to have a high atom economy. High atom economy reduces the production of unwanted products and makes the process much more sustainable. Going back to previous work on percentage yield, the reasons why industry wants percentage yield to be high are slightly different. If you have a high percentage yield, then most of the uh, products become products and very little of the reactants are wasted. So it reduces costs by reducing the need to recycle unused materials and it also increases efficiency by not wasting the starting materials. Let's have a look at a past paper question then. Copper carbonate decomposes when heated, copper oxide and carbon dioxide are made. Tim investigates this decomposition and look at the apparatus he uses. So he's heating up some copper carbonate here in a test tube. Um, presumably then will drive off the carbon dioxide and leave just the copper oxide uh, at the end. This question refers to some earlier work on percentage yield. Tim heats 1.24 grams of copper carbonate in the test tube. He predicts he should get 0.8 grams of copper oxide, but he actually makes 0.7. The percentage yield then equals the actual yield over the predicted yield times 100%, which is 0.7 grams over 0.8 grams times 100, which is 0.875 times 100, which is 87.5% yield. And there's the answer. Note that you can get uh, one mark for giving the correct equation for percentage yield, so it's worth putting that into your answer. Well, here we're told that a factory manufactures copper oxide by heating copper carbonate. Now, copper carbonate, CuCO3, makes copper oxide which is CuO 
and carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is a waste product. Uh, look at the table of relative formula masses and calculate the atom economy for the manufacture of copper oxide. Well, if our copper oxide is our desired product, then our atom economy equals the mass of our desired product, which is our copper oxide, divided by the mass of all the products, which is CuO and CO2, expressed as a percentage. The copper oxide was 80 and the copper oxide plus the carbon dioxide would be 124 times 100% and that comes out at 64.5% atom economy. And there's the mark scheme actually gives it to two decimal places but 64.5 is fine. And again, if you don't get the correct answer, you do get one mark for giving the correct formula or a correct calculation in your answer. Finally, a very hard question. It's important for the factory to have a high percentage yield and a high atom economy and explain why each of these is important. Now, it's two marks, so you only have to give one reason for each, but these are facts you have to learn. Now, for example, a high percentage yield... There's two reasons you can give. The one I'm going to say is it reduces the costs, but you could also say it reduces uh, wasting starting materials. And secondly, a high atom economy. Again, two things you could say. I'm going to say that it, has, uh, it makes it more sustainable. But you could also say that it reduces the processing of unwanted products. And here's the full answer. So high percentage yield reduces costs, increases efficiency by not wasting starting materials, reduces the need to recycle uh, unreacted reactants. Um, a high atom economy makes the process more sustainable or makes it more green or reduces the processing of unwanted products. But you can't just say cheaper. It does say here, answers in terms of cost or efficiency alone are not worthy of credit. So you have to give one of these uh, answers which has come straight off the specification.